good evening one and all in today's lecture we will continue to see the concepts of file handling in c programming language so till now we have seen how we can create a file how we can open a file then how we can read something from a file in different ways and how we can write something to a file in different ways so we'll just see that which methods we have seen till now okay just a quick revision so we have seen that we can create a file using our c program so first of all we have to create a file pointer with the type of file capital case or upper case file you must write asterisk fp this fp can be anything not necessary fp it can be file pointer you can call it you can call it obj you can call it a uh, file pointer then you can suppose you can call it file or anything okay just it is like a variable you can name your variable anything in this case i'm calling my file pointer or the file object as fp and using that fp i can call this built in function f open and i must specify the name of the file and open it in whichever mode for r means read mode i want to read my file if i write here w means i want to write something to my file and a means i want to append something appending something to the file means you want to insert some data at the end without erasing the previous data means something there is already there is something in your file and you want to add something after that you don't want to erase the already existing content so that time you will append it is called as appending means inserting something at the end now one more thing that you need to remember is the file may open or may not open using your c program that is because uh, maybe the memory is full so file could not be created or maybe it does not have the particular permission like some files may be read only some might be uh, you will be able to edit the files okay so suppose i am opening in read mode okay but i try to write something to the file then that is an illegal operation Okay, it will give you an error. Likewise, if the the file is password protected, then I will not be able to open it. Okay, so the file opening this statement will fail. So all these things I have to check, and there is only one way to check. Means the best possible way is you have to check initially if the file point is null. You must check whether after opening the file still it is null or not. If the file point is still null, means it has not opened. but if it is not null if condition satisfied file is opened okay and one more thing you need to remember is suppose a file does not exist and you want to read it okay file is not there in your computer or laptop but you want to read it that means this file name that i have specified here test file.txt i want to read it but it is not there so if you are opening it in read mode it will not open see for example this is my directory in which all the file handling files are there so the name of this file is test file.txt so as you can see here currently there is no test file.txt so now if i run this program it should say that not opened okay or cannot open or unable to open you can write here unable to open okay whatever you want you can write over here so if it is read mode and if file does not exist you try to open it using f open function it will say that unable to open so when i run this program it is saying unable to open as you can see here at the output window okay but suppose this i open it in write mode okay means file does not exist but i want to open it and i want to write something to it then if file does not exist it will create the file automatically the system will create the file automatically the when this program runs first thing what will happen the file will be created and then it will be opened and then you can write inside the file okay so now if i run this file see here, it is right telling open successfully why because it was write mode file did not exist so first it was created and then it got opened okay so now if i show you my directory see here, as you can see test file this one see my mouse cursor this one test file has been created it was not there okay so have you understood when it will open and when it will not yes 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 okay, okay. then so that is for the null checking whether the file pointer is null or not now we can 
write multiple lines to our file right last time we have seen we can read a character we can read a string we can read the characters one by one similarly we can write a character to the file we can write uh, we can write character by character or we can write a complete string okay so now let us see how we can write lines line by line we have seen how to write character by character now we can see how we can write line by line so in this program which i have already written to save time first thing that you have to do is input the number of lines to be written so i'll accept it in a variable n so i have to write n lines in my file okay you have to ask this from the user first how many lines he wants to write then uh, this is just a message the lines are then the user has to enter the lines okay how we will enter using a for loop because he has to enter n lines so n times the for loop will run and this time instead of using see i am going to enter the output at the output window so like suppose i run this it will tell input the number of lines suppose i want to enter three lines then three so n is equal to three now the lines are now i will keep typing the lines suppose i want to type any line okay three lines no so next first line i've entered then i have to click the enter key on my keyboard then i can type the next line okay whatever so what i'm doing i'm typing at the output window and whatever i type has to be used in my program so for this what we do usually we use scanf right if we want to input certain value we use scanf and then whatever the scanf will accept that will be stored in some variable like the value of n how many lines that was used using scanf we accepted the value now if you use scanf and if you have certain multi word strings if there is a space in between it will not read it will stop reading so only the this word will be read only the the word will be read c programming and onwards would not be read so we don't use scanf what we use for multi word strings we use gets function but one drawback of gets is if the string size in which you want to store suppose the string size here is 100 but suppose i enter a string at the output which is of the length 200 then still it will accept it so automatically memory is getting assigned to the extra uh, overflowing part right string is 100 length 100 characters can be written in the string but i'm entering more still it will get accepted but this is not safe right your input uh, quantity should be restricted so for that we use f gets function as i had mentioned while we were studying strings so this f gets function we have also seen in file handling now there are two types of f gets one is without file handling and one is with file handling if i want to show you with file handling we have seen in our summary that day when we designed the summary of the different operations we saw that f gets what is the type that we must pass the parameters we must pass a string string variable name then the count that means how many characters i want to read and the file pointer okay this is f gets to read a particular string from a file but i can use f gets function without the concept of file handling also that has a different parameters that you need to pass okay so first you must pass the name of the string then the size of the string size of string is nothing but what it will say i have written here str of 100 so this string maximum it can store 100 characters means 99 characters plus null character okay so size of string will return 100 okay instead of writing size of string i can simply write 100 also no problem but i want to generalize the concept so i am writing size of string okay it is allowed and std in so that it indicates standard input std i in means you are taking input from some input device and most probably it will be a keyboard okay okay usually it is your keyboard it is a standard input device so we are taking standard input this is a it it, it is a sort of indication to the compiler that we are uh, performing certain input operation because whatever program will run who will run it the operating system okay the operating system supports the compiler and compiler will compile the program and finally the operating system calls the main and the main will get executed and all that so operating system to indicate to the operating system it is an input operation the operating system should access the keyboard for that we are writing std in okay so you can either use scanf but the drawback is it will stop reading at space or new line character other thing is you can use gets function but there is certain risk so you use f gets okay if you are writing a single word as the string then you can use scanf or gets no problem 
and then after you accept the input from the output window you accept the input from here then where it will get stored in the string str okay that is why you must specify the string name so now my string is initialized to what to the the c programming this sentence okay when i is equal to 0 first time the string will be read from the input so when i is equal to 0 this is the string the c programming okay then it will get stored in string str then i have got to write it to the file i must write the string which i have stored in the str variable to my file so we have used this f puts function before also what we have to pass to f puts function we must pass the complete string and the file pointer so that is what the complete string variable name and the file pointer so this the c programming this will get written to my file then i will become one okay that time what will happen again i have to accept the next line next line will be what food then it will get written to my file then i will become incremented then i will become two again next line and so on but how many times i have written less than n plus 1 or you can say simply less than equal to n less than equal to n or you can say less than n plus 1 okay now why i am saying 0 to n because whenever you write your file see here what i am doing i am writing the c programming then i am pressing enter key then i am writing food fun suppose i am anything i am writing then enter key i have to press so what is happening at the out, output window first f o o d space f u n and then enter key so to store that enter key every key on your keyboard has a corresponding ascii value so you can refer the enter key using its ascii value enter is a character actually because everything on your keyboard will it actually refers to a character so enter is a character so it will have certain ascii value so to store that ascii value i am telling that go up to 0 to less than equal to n usually what we do we say 0 to less than n right if we have an array which can store five elements we go from 0 to 4 that is 0 to 5 minus 1 but here i am saying less than equal to n or less than n plus 1 less than equal to n means 0 1 2 3 4 five if i have five elements if i say 0 to less than n let me write it here if i say five elements means 0 to 4 the index but now i'm saying for five elements i want to go from 0 to 5 okay this extra character why it is for the enter key this is whenever you are inputting a string from your output window to store the enter key why i want to store enter key because whenever you store the enter key it acts as a new line right so suppose i write a food fun then i press enter key then what will happen when i press enter key it acts as a new line so that if i store this enter key indirectly what i can do if i store this enter key i can say that i am storing a new line character so on my own i will not have to write a new line character whatever the user is entering at the output window only that i will store otherwise if i don't store the enter character what will happen first i have to accept the string then i'll have to write the character i'll have to use f put c function and maybe i can write backslash n okay what i'll have to do if i want to go to the next line in my file i want to store it line by line in my file for example first i want to type mount everest then i want to store on the next line is earth's highest mountain the next line i want to go so either i should put backslash n over here explicitly like this f put c backslash n so that it goes on the next line or better way is you store the enter character that is what you write over here which will act as a new line character and that since you are storing the enter character automatically on in the file it will come to the next line and it will start printing uh, storing then here again enter character is pressed so it will come on the next line right so this is the relation between backslash n and the enter key here you are giving the input i press enter then i can give the next line then i'll press enter and so on so this enter that i'm pressing that i'm using i'm manipulating it as the next line or the new line character of my file okay that is how when you read your file it will get stored like this mount everest 
then you can assume that there is a backslash n over here so it has gone in the next line but in the file it will not be displayed that is what we want right in that file we don't want to see backslash and backslash and we just want to see the next line but in our program we cannot do that right for a pro to tell the program to go on the next line we must write backslash n but in our files we don't want backslash n so this is the remedy or this is the way you must do it the enter key should be used as backslash n have you understood all that i said just now yes yeah i hope yes. yeah okay very good so this is the way you can write multiple lines how you are writing multiple lines whenever you type the or press the enter key you are saying that i want to store the next line okay it works like that when you press the enter key means you want to store the next line so first you get that line from your output window and then put that line inside your file and then finally close your file okay and then you want to read this file whatever you have written you will want to read it at some point of time so again open the file you have closed it so you'll have to open it okay and whenever you open it the cursor in the file will be at the first position before the first character before m the cursor will be there and if you want to read a character cursor will keep moving forward right we have seen that so how you can move th there are certain functions by which you can move the file pointer like this randomly but if you want now currently you have written everything so your file pointer will be where the cursor after this the end full stop after this full stop you will have the cursor right so from the cursor you will have to read the file if you do not close it right if you do not close this file the cursor will remain over here only if you close the file and then open it cursor will come back to the beginning of the file at the start position right so that is why i am saying close the file and then open it so that cursor hello you are not audible audible now yes now you are audible okay okay yeah so suppose the cursor is over here highest after the word highest the cursor is there then what you will be able to read space mountain direction north hemisphere and all so wherever your cursor is only after that you will be able to read wherever your cursor is only from there you will be able to write okay so that is the way you can change the position from where you want to read or write there are certain functions using which you can move the cursor position suppose i want to read from is that means cursor should be after is then i can read earth highest mountain and so and so if i want to read from northern hemisphere onwards that means after exclamation mark i want to read then the cursor should be after the exclamation mark and then i can read the end at the end okay so wherever your cursor is after that you can perform the operation from after the cursor so there are functions using which you can move the cursor here and there within your file okay that we have to see still so close your file open your file now where your cursor will be after you open your file where your cursor will be anyone can answer yes before mount yes before mount everest that is before the m character there it will be so you can read from m onwards the whole file so i will say the content of the file is and here one more thing the name of the file either you can specify it over here i have opened it in right mode right you can specify it here like this test.txt okay or what you do this test.txt is nothing but a string so store it in the file name string this string f name is nothing but file name okay the name of the file is also a string only right so you can store it in an f name string and instead of writing the file name here you can generalize the concept by writing f name over here right so if you write f name over here while opening the file then what it will replace it with the content of the string that is test txt test txt will come over here right either you write test txt over here like this 
or simply you can generalize it because each time your file name might change right so each time you'll have to change it everywhere best option is store it in a string and you can write it over here the name of the string so it will work like that also the content of the file is the content of the file what is the file this is the file test.txt so that i'm printing here the content of the file percent s percent s will get replaced with f name so the content of the file test.txt is and what i have to do i have to read my file right so this is another way of reading line by line what we have done till now we have written line by line using this logic now what we have to do we can read also line by line for this the code is the f gets that we have seen earlier the f gets that we have seen over here this one for the file handling that f gets you can use over here right so what will happen each line will get stored in this str by this whenever you call the f gets function each line or each string will get stored in this str variable and if it is possible to store the string or if it is possible to read the file and opt in the strings of the file if it is possible to read the file line by line means in one go what you'll read the first line next what you'll read the next line next what you'll read the next line so if this is possible to read the lines in a file then i must perform something okay that is the meaning of this while loop if it is possible to extract the strings or the lines of my file if it is possible to extract the strings or the lines in my file then i will store it in my str variable and i will print the string right using percent s okay so let us run this program and let me show you this is the standard logic input the number of lines suppose two lines i want to store then i can store suppose mount everest click enter so that i go on the next line then good morning okay whatever you want you can type and then again enter this time when you give enter it will stop reading because i have told that i want to store only two lines so i have stored two lines after that it will display the content that mount everest and good morning now whatever content has been written in this file what is the name of the file test.txt so i'll open the test.txt and as you can see mount everest and good morning has been written okay so this was how to write line by line from taking the input from the output window you have taken the input from here line by line and you are storing that line by line in your file so you are able to read line by line okay if you store it in your file line by line then only it will be possible to read line by line right otherwise everything will be on a single line and then you can close now how we saw over here okay these are the advanced features like there are different functions or different versions of the same function like here f gets what we did we used it to accept the string from the output window from here to accept the string we used f gets but we can also use f gets to accept the content from the file just like we read the file last time to read the file what we do we use f gets or f gets c or whatever so one version of f gets function is what from the output window you can read the content another version of f gets function is what from the file you can read the content right so f gets function depending on the parameters it can do different functions here i had written std in so from the output window that is from the keyboard actually it accepted the input if i don't give you std in but if i give my file pointer name here fp then it will take the output from the file so this third parameter that you see over here that needs to be passed to f gets function determines that from which area i must accept the input either from the keyboard that is from the output window or is it from my file okay so fp if you write it, it will accept from the file if you write std in it will accept through the keyboard okay so this is the way you can use the same function but its operation will be different depending on the parameters that you pass this is called function overloading those who know c++ java and object oriented concepts might already know what i'm telling that is function overloading in same function but depending on the parameters that you pass you can perform different operations this is called function overloading you are overloading or assigning different tasks to the same function okay 
so similar to f get s for the keyboard to accept input from the keyboard similarly to put the output to the output window or to display the output at the output window there is an f put s function also now either you can use f put s string name and here you can write fp so what it will do it will write something to the file or put something inside my file but here instead of fp if i write std out then it will write something to my console window over here just like it wrote mount everest good morning it will write that so either use printf or another type of output facility is provided by c programming that is f put s okay any one you can use so now let me show you using f put s whether we get the same execution or not so again enter the number of lines two lines suppose let me change the lines and next line i want to write okay so same thing you're getting right and purposely i wrote small e over here so that you know that same character will be read it is not that small e gets converted to capital e or something like that. whatever you write that will only get stored and that will only be read okay so you can use whichever one you're comfortable with and another thing is using printf what you can do you can display a string at the output you can display an integer at the output you can display a character at the output and so on but this version of f put s can display only the string why because we have passed the string over here str right so the string can be outputted or displayed so different parameters will cause different things maybe you can input or output an integer or a double and so on so there are different ways to take input it is not compulsory that only through the keyboard you can take the input maybe through your uh, another uh, like there is certain graphical type of input also which you can give or maybe you can click the mouse at the output window somewhere and from there you can take the input so there are different things that you can do it's not till now we have seen only through the keyboard but that is not the only way okay so have you understood how to read and write multiple lines line by line how you can do it have you understood Uh, yes okay yes. now next program we have seen that using f just a minute we have seen that while reading and writing if we use f put s that is case number we can use f get s to display a particular string right at the inside the uh, to accept a string from the file we can use f get s or to display a string we can use f put s okay we can put a string or display a string or write a string inside the file we can write something inside the file using f put s a string or using f get s we can read the string from the file okay but all this time what we are doing we are dealing with strings either we are reading the string from the file or we are writing the string to the file or inside the file but if we want to write subtract an integer value to the file or if we want to read an integer value from the file and so on so this thing can also be done by f get s and f put s that is we are changing the parameters that we are passing to these functions so in this program see here f put s and f get s has been used in a different way similarly f scan f i can use over here it will do the same thing i can read something from my file and f put and f print f i can read something uh, sorry i can write something to my file but what is that till now only strings we have been able to write inside the file till now only strings we have been able to read from the file but now we can also write integer value double value character value float value read from the file or write inside the file for example here there is a string good evening welcome back there is an integer a is equal to 12 there is a float floating point value b is equal to this character c is equal to q 
and I've opened some file in the write mode so that I can write all these values inside the file. Now using printf, but the file version that is fprintf. How we have used fprintf previously? We have used fprintf by passing the file pointer, the suppose we want to write a string, then the string name. And since we are writing a string, percent %s. But now I want to write something like an integer. Then what I'll do, percent %d I must mention. Okay. Then if I don't want to write only integer, I want to write string, integer, float, double, all together. Then what I'll do, suppose first I want to write a string, then percent %s. Next, I want to write an integer value inside my file. Then percent %d. Then I want to write certain floating point value, then percent %f. Then certain character values of percent %c. Here, what I'm writing, first string, then integer, then float, then character. Similarly, here, the corresponding names of the variables. First string variable name, then the integer variable's name, then the floating point variable's name, and the character variable's name. So in this way, I can write not only a string, but different things. OK, so I can write all this. Similarly, fscanf, I can use to read the different data types. Same thing I have to do, file pointer. Then same way, percent %s, percent %d, and all. Like how when we use scanf and printf, what do we do? We use percent %d and then the name. Right. So same thing we are doing here also. Using the percent and then the name of the variable. Right. This is if you don't consider file version of printf, this is like a normal printf, right? But there are a number of parameters. First is the file pointer, then the percents, and then the variable names. So I have written everything. I'll close my file. Now I'll open my file in read mode. Now what is stored in my file? String is stored, integer is stored, float is stored, and character is stored. So either you can read your file character by character. But since I already know, I am aware that which data types are stored in my file. So I can read that in the same way, like percent %s, percent %d, percent %f, percent %c. And you can write ampersand variable name, right? Whenever we use scanf, what we do? We use the per ampersand over here, right? Same thing we have to do over here also, ampersand. Now string, since it is acting as a pointer to the first character, it doesn't matter whether you give ampersand or not. I've already told this to you, right? So if you want to give ampersand str1, or simply you can give str1, no problem. OK, so what I'll summarize this. I have written a string and different data, other data types also. Which ones I've written? I've written str, and I've written abc ka values. Now, whatever I read from the file, that has to be stored in certain variable, and that variable's value I have to print at the output. right? Whatever is stored in my file, I have to read it. After reading it, I will store it in some variable, and the value of that variable I have to display at the output window over here. So in which variable I will store the content of the file? The string that I have written in my file, I will store it in an str1 variable. The integer that I have written inside my file, I will store, read it and store it in an x variable. The float that I have written in my file, I will read it and store it in a y variable. And the character that I have written in my file, I will read it and store it in a z variable. And this x, y, z is also an integer, float, and character, as you can see here. right? So if you want to read a character from the file, it will be stored in a character type variable. If you want to read an integer from the file, it will be stored in an integer variable. OK, now don't get confused. But whatever you write in your file is stored by default as a string. OK, then how can you read these different data types from your file? Because at the time of writing, what you have done, you have written the exact data type. That is, you have written an integer float and character. So what the compiler will do? If it finds a data, which is an integer, then it will be read successfully. If it finds a float, then it will read it, and it will get stored in y. If it finds a character type variable, then it will get read successfully and stored in z. By default, everything in your file is a string only. But if it is possible that that string is certain other data type, what I mean is, suppose you write in within double quotes, if you write 1, 2, 3, 4, then it becomes a string, right? 1, 2, 3, 4 is no longer 1,234. It becomes 1, 2, 3, 4 as a string. But suppose it only 1, 2, 3, 4. It is an integer, right? So this is nothing but, though it is a string, actually it is an integer, right? It can be converted to an integer. So that is what is happening here. 
though it is a string inside your file it is possible to convert it or consider it as a integer or a float or a character so that is what is happening here okay otherwise if you just use your normal reading or normal writing like we have seen till now here there are different ways right to read f put s or f print f right there are different ways we have seen how to read and write all that time what we were reading and writing we are reading and writing strings why because whatever is in your file is a string but there is a possibility that it may be some other data type which has been converted into a string because you have stored it inside a file okay and i'll close this so now let me run this program i hope all this you have understood so now i'll run this see and since i'm using f scanf the drawback is i will be able to read only the string if it does not have spaces if it does not have new line character that is why i have not left any space between good evening welcome back and all right i have written it as a single word like if i give space between good and evening f scanf will not be able to read it properly okay so that is the drawback but to show you the a different way to write the different data types i have used f scanf okay so if i don't give space it will read the whole thing as a single word f scanf so it has read it as a single word okay if i had given space only good would be read but now good evening welcome back everything is being read then the integer that i had stored then the float that i had stored and the character that i had stored and now if i open my file also trial.txt you can see here it has been stored as an string then integer then float and then character right suppose i change the character over here suppose i want to store the character y okay and i have opened my file in read, write mode i am writing something to my file so this already existing content this one in my file will it be erased if i run my program again or will it remain if i run my program again can you answer this question i repeat i have i am opening my file in my write mode so this already existing content will it be retained or will it remain in my file if i run my program again or will it get erased it will get erased yes very correct very good so that is why uh, let me run my program once again i have changed the character i want to write y so i am able to write y okay it has read y now if i open my file trial.txt see here y has been written means previous content good evening welcome back till q that has got erased and the new thing that i have run since i run my program again whatever new content that will be written now if i open my file in the append mode now let us run the program again and see so now i will open my file and show you <coughs> see here till why it was the previous content and now the new content has been inserted at the end again right so that is append difference between append and write mode i hope you understood is there any doubt till now no okay and uh, we can stop here for today you can put your attendance in the chat box and one more small assignment like for your interest i'm going to tell you that suppose something is written in a file in file 1 i have written something that content of file 1 i want to copy it to file 2 okay the content of one file i want to write it inside another file or i want to copy the same content of file 1 to file 2 then what i'll do i will read my file and then the whatever i read that has to be written to the file 2 so let me show give you a better idea by showing some diagram over here okay you can try this i'll be sending the solution but uh, it will be better if you try it so that you get a good practice about it for example you have file 1 you have file 2 okay, this is file 1 and this is file 2 in file 1 i have written something a b c d now i want to copy the content of file 1 to file 2 so initially my cursor is before a so i have to read character by character or maybe string by string or any by any method that you have learned till now 
you just read your file okay by any method read it suppose you are reading character by character first you will read the character a so file pointer will come over here you have read a character now you write this character inside file 2 then you read the next character of file 1 you have read the character b write this character to the file 2 read the next character you have read c from file 1 write the c to the file 2 okay so what you are doing you are reading something from file 1 and immediately you are writing it to file 2 so you have to open file 1 in read mode and file 2 in write mode so you will read a character from file 1 and immediately write it to file 2 so you are working on two files simultaneously will you be able to do this program on your own yes will you be able to will you at least try see i'm not telling you to submit it to me i'm just telling you to try it on your own ones will you try it yes yes yeah. because it will be a good practice for you right if you do it on your own you'll remember it also okay so you can put your attendance in the chat box this is for your own practice you don't have to submit this program to me quickly put your attendance and after putting your attendance you can leave if you don't have doubts any doubts no thank you okay bye bye thank welcome you. welcome thank you welcome